Hi, this is your Sabdul Bharti and we are here at Cube Conan Cloud Radio Con in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today we have with us Yehaskel Robinovich, CTO and co-founder of Ground Cover. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks you. Pleasure being here. It's my pleasure, but this is the first time you and I are talking. So I'm also curious about, since you're a co-founder of the company, tell us a bit about the company. What do you folks do and what challenge problem you saw in that space which led to the creation of ground cover yeah sure so basically ground cover is an observability platform uh, basically it's our dream tool uh, we we spent uh, a lot of years in R&D working with other observability vendors and we always face the same two challenges uh, one is the ability to instrument all your application right so in order to get traces you need to instrument or your application. That takes a lot of time and a lot of organizational um, joint effort. And once you do that, you get to the second problem, which is a huge problem, and it, that's cost, right? So now you're shipping a lot of data from your environment to some kind of SaaS vendor, and that costs a lot of money. So you start removing um, observability data from your infrastructure and basically that didn't make sense to us as engineers and we started ground cover to basically solve those two problems. Now I would like to talk a bit about eBPF you know of course it has been around for a while but there may be a lot of folks who don't know about it so just go do a quick intro to eBPF. eBPF is a Linux kernel technology which allow you to instrument a kernel in a very safe and dynamic way. What it actually means for our customers is that we can deploy our daemon set and three minutes later, they get all their observability signals without changing a single line of code. We love call it like the fastest onboarding for the observability platform. Imagine that you run three minutes, install a daemon set, and you get everything you need in one place. eBPF allow us to do that and still not involve any of the developers to change their code. That's some kind of a magic of the kernel. Since we are here at KubeCon, so talk a bit about your presence at this event and what kind of traffic you're seeing on your booth, what kind of conversation you are having when you're walking around with analysts and journalists. Yeah, well, first of all, this is our home base, right? Uh, we grew up in Kubernetes environment. Uh, we really love Kubernetes and we see it as, as the future. And in a way, the enabler for us to deploy our daemon set and, and get the sensors in a very fast motion. Uh, we're talking for a lot of customers. We, we're here with a lot of engineers from our team. Uh, obviously, a little bit of sales and, and, and product. And while we're talking with our with the customers and prospects, we're seeing the same things happening again. People struggle with the observability instrumentation and basically struggle with cost. So we see a lot of movement from uh, SaaS vendors to um, in cloud, what we call bring your own cloud solutions, where you host the observability data plane inside your account. We really see this motion of people and companies want to take ownership of their data and store it inside their uh, account or perimeter. I mean, observability depending on how you look at it, you know, can be seen as a solved problem in this space. There are a lot of players also in this space kind of getting a bit crowded. Everything in the CNCF space is, you know, a lot of vendors, which is actually good, very healthy ecosystem there. So what role is ground cover playing in terms of helping Kubernetes users? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question because we do see a lot of observability vendors pop up. Uh, and I think the maybe 100% of them are solely relying on OTEL instrumentation, which is a very good project, obviously a CNCF project, very uh, popular, but it still requires a lot of hard work. Um, and we, we, when we look at the, the space, we see no innovation at all at the sensor side. Uh, we still, we, you know, you have the, the three big vendors out there uh, that most companies, once they get to a certain uh, size, they will move away because it's too expensive or because of privacy and, and security. Um, and once you move away from those, you basically rely on Oto, which is still work in progress and still hard tasks to implement, especially for big enterprises where they need to coordinate all the organization. Um, we started seeing eBPF sensor are very, very strong in the security field and networking field, obviously but we haven't seen any big players in the observability 
uh, domain that actually take eBPF to the edge and rely on it for all the signals. And basically, this is what ground cover is trying to do. Uh, we try to innovate in the sensor side. We aggregate a lot of those, a lot of the data that we collect from the eBPF and minimize the volume of data that we transfer to make the whole observability data plane much more reasonable, much more uh, economical, makes sense. What kind of trends, patterns you are seeing evolving in the observability space? Because you know the Kubernetes adoption, I mean, of course, but it has been in production for so many years, been 10 years of Kubernetes, but uh, just like Linux kernel, new use cases emerge and those use cases bring their own challenges. So what kind of I mean, pattern you're seeing in this space? Yeah, I think we're seeing uh, much more of you know jobs uh, inside Kubernetes, so ephemeral workloads uh, that goes up and down. That makes really hard uh, in terms of observability because that creates a lot of cardinality, uh, which in terms you know makes it very expensive. We do see a lot of uh, GPU with uh, the age of uh, era of AI uh, become de facto like very um, uh, very common inside Kubernetes clusters. Um, that bring another challenge, right? You need now you need to understand how to monitor another hardware in a way, um, and those uh, advancements of technology not always come along with the observability that, that needs to be done. So we, we see a lot of those um, use cases in Kubernetes uh, actually driving us to implement more and more features from the eBPF. So that's really challenging and very interesting. And when we look at this observability, the size is growing. Uh, there may be also concern, you know, where is that data going? Can you talk about how ground cover deals with that? The way we handle that is basically we're not another SaaS solution. We understand that observability data should be kept inside your account from perspective of security and privacy, but also in terms of cost and efficiency of you know, sending data with egress to another uh, vendor. So ground cover solely rely on what we call bring your own cloud or our in-cloud platform which basically provision the entire backend inside the customer account. And therefore, we, don't, we, can, uh, we can allow ourselves not to charge you by volume, which make us really align with our customer needs. We don't want them to send data they don't need. And, and therefore, we, we have opportunity to aggregate and filter unneeded data and still keep our customers very pleased with the data that we provide. Jess, thank you so much for joining me today. Talk about Ground Cover, the company, and how you are solving the problem for this ecosystem. Thanks for those great insights, and I would love to have you folks back on the show. Now we are connected, so I would love to have you both on the, back on the show and to see you know, what else is going on at the company. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure, and looking forward to meet you again.